Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some interesting foil prices that are a little insane for what they are. And we will start with McKinney Mask again. So this card is a $5 foil. So one of the interesting parts is if you can get foil bulk from old, old McKinney Mask foil bulk, do so because you will find this in it. Anyone who played during Mercadian Mask, I mean, the foils were not that valuable. You didn't know about Rashawn Port. It was one of the best cards in the block. And you didn't know about Dark Ritual, Brainstorm, and even, I'm missing one, Counterspell. You knew that they were very expensive foils, but you did not know about this one because it was recent. And this went from $0.25, cents, $0.50 cents in the foil to... Five dollars, and I'd see this happening with a lot of McKinney Mask. I don't see it stopping anytime. Old cards are old cards, and old foils are old foils, and they are a even more of a collector's item because there are far fewer of these foil cards out there. Uh, next, Brushland has jumped a ton. The foil is sixty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Uh, obviously, this is being played in modern for Adrazi. It's a pain land. It's a pain land that has been reprinted a few different times. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I know that it was reprinted in Ice Age, but there was no foil version in Ice Age. I can't remember if it was reprinted uh, any time before then. But it is a pain land, and it is very good for Adrazi. There was a brief moment that you could have got these very cheap after Adrazi was announced. As you can see, it spiked from probably $2 to over $7, but then it just continued to go up. And I mean, if a card sees play as a four of, and it is a land, and it sees play in a very competitive modern deck, yes, you can almost be positive it's gonna be valuable. Now the next card is one of my favorite foils. I did own one of them, but I sold it to, I sold it last GP Houston, which was two years ago. Uh, GP Houston is happening again this year. And I am going to sell off a large chunk of my collection because, again, I who really needs 200 copies of a card? The answer is no one. I'm going to sell pretty much anything over a playset now that I have sleeves. So, like, all my cards are in the same sleeve, so it's really easy to change, interchange them between decks. I used to have different sleeves for different decks, but now I don't, uh, and that's going to save me a lot of money. I'm going to sell every single extra Lily, every single extra Tamagoyf, every single extra whatever on GP Houston. I'm just going to do it. Uh, for the dual lands, I'm going to keep the dual lands. I'm going to keep the old cards just because they might not even buy them because they just their price is a little outrageous, and I don't know how easy it is for stores to sell the older reserve list cards. When I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the ones that have gone up to five bucks, right? The pirates, I mean, I don't think the buy list would be very good. I'm gonna sell my extra shock lands and my extra fetch lands, which is a lot of them. And you might be like, okay, why are you doing this? Why are you do I still play magic? I just don't need extra ones. They are beautiful to look at, but there's no reason I need them. All right, let's move to, oh, we skip my favorite foil, okay. Anyway, um, Auric Champion, I do own one of these, and let me tell you this, it is so much more beautiful than the reprint, and it actually, the foil has been going up in price. Yes, you heard me correct. The foil has been going up in price. You need to see in person. Um, if you see it in person with the sun in the background, like it's just one of those things that, like it's a Birds of Paradise uh, buy box. It's not like super valuable. I think it's like $20, $28. But I would never trade away. It would never be in a trade binder, right? It's These cards are just cards that you will not find in a trade binder given how uncommon they are. Plus just, I mean, you look at it and you say, hmm, if you have any appreciation for artwork, you keep it. All right. Princess Gisela, I love this princess so much. And I have a lot of copies of her in foil. I own eight to 10 copies in foil. I knew that this would be good. She did take a massive hit when it was reprinted in one of the commander decks. 
I was like, oh, that's not a good sign. And I picked up, so I, at that time I had six foils. I picked up my, I, I don't really remember how many, I have at least eight. So I picked, I remember buying two more foils at $28 at the time and thinking, hmm, all right, let's double down on the, you know, let's double down on this card. Such a good command. I mean, foil mythic angel. Foil mythic legendary angel. They have never let me down, um, ever. And it's the ones that I like. So I don't like Avacyn that much, actually. I do like the Flip Avacyn because he's so cheap. He's dirt cheap right now. And I expect after rotations, he will be way cheaper than he is now. I don't expect her price to be that high for a while. So there will be a long buy-in period. Oh, I could not believe that this is a $37 card. I'm pretty sure it's reprinted in one of the Modern Masters and you can get foil copies of it. But the original one is $37. This is played in the Tron deck and it is, you know, I would say one of the essential pieces in the Tron deck, although it is a common. It's something that you really, really want. Um, it's also played in the Adrazi decks now because they can pick up any colorless uh, card. So it's a, overall, it's a very strong card for what it does in the decks that it plays. It's kind of like almost a ponder-esque effect, like a mini tutoring effect. And we know how valuable tutors are in modern. But $37, that's like a little, uh, when, I first, when I looked at the price, I was like, mm, do I own any of these? I don't think I do. I own a lot of the regular ones, but unfortunately, I never own a foil one. So if you really believe in a card, you can buy the card. Um, and the Coalition Relic is one of those things. In Future Sight, it wasn't that good. I think Future Sight, let me, I'm trying to remember when EDH was created. I think EDH was created in uh, Zendikar. Original Zendikar is when I first discovered EDH. And around that time period, Commander came out. So I was in school. And original Zendikar, JST Mime Scope, there was when... The EDH came out. So this one was before then in Future Sight. Uh, Future Sight was an interesting set. And this was reprinted in Urza versus Phyrexia, I believe. I think it was in the Urza side of the... It's definitely not in the Phyrexia side. So interesting enough, the foil was $71. And it would have been so easy for you to pick up the foils. If you trend spot and you know that EDH is coming and you buy all these foils up, you would have made so much bank. You would have made so much bank, but it's the same thing is happening today. It's just not with foil EDH cards, it's with old cards, old bulk cards from Miraz, even the dark, old man, Dingaroo is like, like what is it, like $8 right now and not falling because of the reserve list. Norwales is $1.50, which, you know, that's, it's good. I, I don't know. Maybe we should buy out Norway again. I don't know. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.